Maga country. There's Maga lots country. of cameras out here. Maga country. Does everybody remember this man, Gilbert Ortega? Lots of cameras out oh, here. Maggots is right. You're Maggots is right. Go away. Maggots are right. You're just a fool, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you even know how to use that? Be the best thing you'd ever post. Go hang out of geese. Got some pretty things. Okay, hush Step into the street, my friend. 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 Or are you scared? Are you scared? Are you afraid? Step in the street. Step in the street. Well, hey, don't tell me. He told me step in the street. Oh, you're. Little buddies did you came over here. Up? Did you see me? Oh, run? your little friends did you came see over me here. Run? You sure backed up, you Indian? who went out of his way while ESPN cameras were rolling to spew racism in Arizona. We have an update on this story with an interview from the man who took the video, Cody Blackbird. Walk me through everything that occurred go go step by step here what you guys were doing why espn was there as well which was a cool opportunity and then why mr ortega did what he did yeah absolutely so um myself i'm a six-time native american music award-winning artist i've been performing around the world for uh, about 15 years and um, a couple years ago uh, the native art market opened up the first ever native owned and operated store in Old Town Scottsdale. Uh, they started implementing performances into the store, creating a whole cultural experience. Uh, so I've been working there as a performer for about uh, two years since they opened. Um, we were there when, uh, let me back up a second, when ESPN was doing their, their walkthrough and their plans for having their ESPN coverage and uh, tailgate party on Main Street, uh, they found out that the native art market was having live cultural performances and they asked the native art market um, if they could come in on a day where there would be performers to shoot some b-roll and some breakaway segments for um, their super bowl coverage on espn uh, the owners said absolutely called all of us performers and dancers together and you know said hey be here on this day espn's coming in and uh we're all very excited everyone that we had dancers from the ages of 10 um, all the way up into their 50s. And uh, everybody was excited that ESPN was reaching out for this opportunity to have us um, on their network during the Super Bowl um, and include some indigenous or have some indigenous inclusion um, into their programming, which is, you know, something the NFL has been doing this year, especially um, with including uh, a lot of different indigenous aspects to um, their events going around and right up to the Super Bowl where they had indigenous performers before the Super Bowl. Uh, so we're all very excited. Uh, ESPN came in, we did the shots in the native art market. Uh, then the idea came up, hey, why don't we go out on Main Street and do, um, you know, some, some performing and some dancing um, in front of the Super Bowl sign that is that was set up there. So, um, we, we went out there as soon as we we get out there we're, we're set up on the platform of the Super Bowl sign and um, at that moment Gilbert Ortega comes out of his store he starts doing the mocking war hoops and uh, mocking uh, you know heya heyas and tomahawk chop and uh, just mockingly dancing um, to what we were doing and it was said to him several times before I started videoing, why don't you come out into the street and say these things in front of cameras that will show your racist views to the world? And he kept going. Um, at one point, he started saying something in Navajo, which at first was translated as, I will F you up. Um, later we started getting people messaging after the video went viral and we've had, I would say now probably 15 speakers that have reached out to us, fluent speakers that have said, no, the actual translation of what he said is I'm the devil, you're my slave and I will rape you and I will own you. Um, after he said that. 
was said again, why don't you come and say these things in front of the street? And he said, I'll come into the street. And then he charged at us. And that's when, uh, in the video, you see my brother and the owner of the Native Art Market, Denise, uh, stepping up and, you know, having to physically hold Gilbert Ortega back. Um, when that, you know, a few seconds after that, when he was backing away from that, all, everything that was going on, um, that's when he said, well, you sure backed up now, you effing Indians. Um, he was then escorted back into his store. ESPN, from the staff to the videographers that were there, were so apologetic. Like, oh, my God, we can't believe you. Is this a normal thing? Do you have to deal with this all the time? And my brother said, sadly, in Indian country, this is a regular occurrence with our people. We are constantly having to come up against these types of situations. And she said, I am so sorry that your people have to deal with this. Um, going um, afterward, you know, we finished the segment shots with ESPN. Uh, everything cooled down. Uh, the next day I was showing up and, and I should say that I typically will go in the front door of the native art market um, and, and just park on a you know main street. But um, I don't feel safe doing that. So I walked, uh, we parked somewhere else and walked in the back door. Um, and as I was walking up, I saw through the front door of the native art market that Gilbert Ortega is out front talking to the owners. So I approached um, and that's when Denise, the owner of native art market said, and Gilbert, this is Cody Blackbird. This is one of the performers that you verbally assaulted yesterday. And he went to reach out his hand and he said, I'm, I'm so sorry for my actions. They were disgusting. They don't represent who I am. And I just looked at him and I said, I'm not shaking your hand. I've been instructed not to talk to you. And I, I have nothing to say to you. And he he held his head down in shame and said, fair enough. And uh, he walked away. Um, and and that's, that's the end of the, the interaction there with him over the span of two days. All right. Um... Obviously, it goes without saying, but I'm very sorry that this happened to you. Uh, we covered it previously. It is horrible. And yet, through all these videos that people take in the streets of this country and also different countries, this is stuff that just happens all the time. It is not acceptable, but it's not that it's anything new. It's that we have taken some of the power back to put these people on blast. These could be... <laughs> you know, microaggressions, one horrible bigoted word in a sentence that no one caught before, but then someone happened to be recording at that time. This sort of stuff just happens a lot. And I'm very thankful that folks like you and many others are not afraid to upload these videos because these people should be put on blast. I don't know if th that's up for you and someone else to decide what happens next. But some sort of punishment should obviously be occurring. Now, let me ask you this. Have you had any interactions with this man previously? Uh, not directly, no. But um, there have been many interactions from other performers and other people in the Native community across the Southwest who have, uh, you know, reportedly dealt with this man's actions before. Um, I do know that... Um, he has had some run-ins, according to some of our other uh, co-performers at the Native Art Market, where uh, he's kind of alluded to the dancers, go back in your store, you don't belong out here, when they'll be out on the sidewalk on their break, or interacting maybe outside with people who are interested in their, you know, fully beaded regalia, want to get a picture, those types of things. That's what they're there for, is to promote, you know, our culture and show people that we're proud to be here. And um, for them to be accosted yet again is, is and just terribly sad. Uh, I was not aware of that until after the fact when I've heard that this is not a, a new thing with Gilbert to um, ha have some outlandish type interactions with uh, people within the BIPOC community. And I, I don't just mean our indigenous community, but uh, there are reviews and reports that there was a woman in a headscarf a couple years ago that got chased out of his store and was told that, you know, that is not welcomed. 
um, in his store. So it seems like there's been some issues in the past um, from what people have said online. Um, and it's very sad because it's 2023 and, and like you said, it happens every day, but no longer are we just letting it slide. We are now pulling out our phones and we are holding people accountable to the fullest extent of the law because this is wrong and you should not be owning a business in 2023 if you don't understand that. Well, I was going to ask you about that. As a local, <laughs> what, from what I understand from those in the media that covered the story when it was uh, initially reported, this is a store that's been around for some 200 years to my understanding. Is that accurate? Um, not that location, but the Gilbert Ortega um chain franchise mm -hmm. however you want to i mean there are uh many gilbert ortega locations and they'll all tell you we don't have anything to do with gilbert ortega but um, from what i've found it's all under one conglomerate corporation and it's all under the ortega name correct, correct. right and this is a business that i assume his parents or grandparents started and it's just been passed down to him yes his father gilbert ortega senior i believe is who who started it mm -hmm. And what exactly uh, sort of business are they in for those that don't know? Um, they sell Southwestern gifts. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. Southwestern gifts and souvenirs. Why, why, why would you limit it to that? Well, I have never been in their store. Mm. Um, so I can't say for certain, and, and this is how I've put it in the past to, uh, in some other interviews is I just always encourage patrons to ask questions, ask who's making their jewelry and ask if the store is cooperating with the native American arts and crafts law, um, verify your purchases with social media artist pages of who they claim make the jewelry. And this is not, and not directing this towards Ortegas. I'm directing this towards any sort of store that markets that they sell Native American jewelry. Um, it, like I said, I can't, I've never been in there, so I can't directly say, yes, this is what they sell. Right. Um, but that is what I'm, you know. Uh, Just a forewarning for anybody buying goods. Yeah. And, and that's, that's all I really know to say on, on that piece of the subject. Really. Of course. What has the reaction been like locally to this? It's, it, I mean, it, People have been coming in to the Native Art Market nonstop the past few days, just voicing their concern and their support. Uh, the, the support has been overwhelming. We've had very, very, very few uh, negative interactions online or in person um, with this situation. Most has been the community coming out to support to say, hey, we don't stand for this. This is not what we're about. And what would you like to see happen to Gilbert Ortega? Well, you know, this it, we have to look at what happened and understand that the trauma that was caused is is great uh, beyond any sort of um, other issues. You know, that like I said, there was a, a 10 year old girl there who's imprinted with this. Many of us are imprinted with what happened. Uh, many of us don't feel safe to be in Old Town. Um, we're constantly you know finding new parking spot moving our vehicles just that type of thing and i'm not directing that fear to one person i'm just saying when you're victims in a situation like this there might be other people who are on that same side of who perpetuated the crime um, and it's always just a scary thought um, so i've relayed that to the prosecutor's office uh, today i spoke with the prosecutor's office for the first time and I was reassured that they are um, looking into this and that the charges that were recommended by the police department are by no means what the final deal will be in this situation. Um, so he needs to be held fully accountable. Um, we need the, the attorney general and possibly the FBI to step in and advance these two hate crimes charges. Um, this is exactly what the DOJ defines as a hate crime. Um, and he needs to be held to the fullest extent of the law because being a, a quote unquote pillar of the community and a business owner who owns three quarters of, you know, the old town main street strip, 
uh, you shouldn't be allowed to act this way and have support from a city. Um, to have the city standing by the way they have and just do their damage control photo ops with indigenous peoples. Right. While on the back end of things, I've been totally disrespected and the rest of the victims have been disrespected by Scottsdale Police Department um, and the mayor's office with the lack of attention to this. Um, this is not a time for politicians to come and take photos and post about how they stand with indigenous performers right. unless you're going to back the victim's advocacy and say, we also want to see these charges um, reevaluated and, and taken up as far as they can go. Okay, there, there's so much that I want to expand upon from what you just said, but let's, let's just start from the uh, beginning of that last sentiment. What exactly, from your understanding, uh, would differentiate this uh, from a hate crime? You said that he's not being charged with a hate crime. Why exactly is that? Well, in the state of Arizona, there is no hate crime statute, which is something that I personally will be um, jumping on board with however I can after this to um, make sure that the state of Arizona implements a hate crime. Yeah, that's shocking. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, and sadly, because there's not a state hate crime statute, the local police departments seem to think that that means hate crimes don't exist in Arizona, that you can't advance charges for a federal hate crime in a city, which you completely can if it violated federal law. Um, so the fact that uh, there is no hate crime statute, that has been a huge point of uh, excuses and contention from the police department of, you know, why I was reassured by a lieutenant at the Scottsdale Police Department that they would be doing nothing more, nor did they care to do anything more. And I could call a million times and I would get the same answer, which is we will not seek to advance charges and we will not reach out for a consult to the AG's office. So basically you have to find a way to go above them and have whoever that official is twist their arm into doing something more. Absolutely. It's rough. Um, in, uh, you mentioned the mayor. I do find it rather interesting as I've been covering this intersection of sports and politics for a while is that there are those photo ops that no matter what, it could be, you know, those uh, higher ups at the National Football League, for example, in a, when Atlanta hosted the Super Bowl, Roger Goodell really wanted to show that he cared about the black community. So what did he do? He marched with black leaders, you know, talked about Martin Luther King and boy, did the NFL promote it. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, like knowing that the Super Bowl is going on, the mayor and uh, other local mayors of big cities really need to, without saying play politics, do the right thing here. Um why exactly have they, uh, if, if what you're saying is true, and I have no reason to doubt you, why exactly would they only say, hey, let's snap a photo and get out of here? Do they believe that you're just going to accept your photo as consolation and then maybe move on? I, I believe that the mayor feels that if he talked to a few indigenous people, he spoke to all of us that were victims that day, and that simply isn't the case. Um you you can't go into somebody's work where they are working, i.e. the Native Art Market, when there's performers performing, and expect that in public that these victims of a hate crime are going to just openly open up to you about how they're feeling. Of course, they're right. just take your picture, shake your hand, and go on, and then you're going to post it on social media. And by the way, post it on social media and disable comments. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. And mm -hmm. and then everything's going to be OK. All the while, I'm on the phone trying to call you and you only returned my call the first day telling me that you were going to do everything you could. You were going to look into this. You were going to you weren't going to let this go. And people were left to wonder. And while I told the mayor that I would always stand by um, when people try to put the connection together that the Ortega name is related. There is no relation. The mayor is not related to Gilbert Ortega. I don't want that to ever get out there. However, everything else 
just goes back to connections, business, city connections. Uh, how much does Gilbert Ortega, and this is a question, this isn't a statement with mm-hmm. any known answer to it, but how much does he donate to the police department? That's a good question. Uh, you know, and so when I start to see these, because I've, I've been involved in situations like this before where I've, you know, been an advocate or, or tried to get people connected with the proper channels who have been in this situation. And we've seen it time and time again where it just gets swept under the rug because people have connections. Right. Um, now, those might not be personal connections. They could just be, you know, political or or um, or. Uh, you know, business because he's a business owner in the city of Scottsdale and, and they're wanting to play politics and smooth everything over on everybody's side. I mean, it's just a typical political game, but um, I'm sorry when you're the mayor of a city that is on indigenous lands, which is every city across this. Yes, very much so. You're literally like a mile off the reservation here in Scottsdale and and you're going to play politics on a hate crime during the Super Bowl, it just seems like the wrong time to play politics. I'm curious, from your perspective, has, have you ever felt like a mayor uh, has had your community's back? Yes. I, I mean, yes. I, I actually have uh, in the past. I, I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, which is one of the most diverse cities in the United States, um, which with over 200 languages spoken in the city. Um, And I have to say that there was a couple administrations that uh, were right there alongside of our people when there were, you know, I, um, there was a hate crime that happened up in Alaska years ago where a group of young men uh, decided to go and, and use frozen paintballs on homeless native people. Um, And I have to say that was a time when, you know, the whole city came together. They had, um, events and, you know, kind of a community meetings with city officials, with the mayor. And, and uh, yeah, so I have been in that situation where administrations of the city have had the people's back. And it's, it's very rare that that happens. But when it does happen, you know, that's when you, you know, you've met somebody that's for the people. I want to go back to one thing you told me, which is the charges. Um, yeah. now we, we, we covered, uh, you know, oddly enough, why there are no hate crime charges in your state of Arizona still befuddles me. However, it sounds like the police gave you a set of charges, but it sounds like the prosecutor might be having second thoughts and wanting to alter those or add to those. Is that correct? From what I heard that prosecutors had never seen the case until today they might have you know heard about it through the office or however that works but they didn't get the case in front of them until today um so when i talked to them it was it was very fresh on on their minds and their agenda um and i was told that by no means um what the police department has sent into them is the final say wow um i am uh startled and surprised uh by all of these revelations that we're learning on a lighter note you are a fantastic musician you have been very successful in your career um how has that maybe helped you out through this process i mean look we we all have our stuff right like if, if someone has a tough day when they come home from work maybe they'll hop in a lobby and go play halo i I don't even know if people play that anymore or like uh call of duty Warzone or something but this sounds like it is your um it is your potential getaway um and a solid distraction uh what exactly has music meant to you over these years uh, music has meant everything to me i came up in a in a house of music my my father was an accomplished a singer songwriter and american indian cowboy poet um I grew up on the laps of people like guy clark who is you know one of the most influential american singer songwriters um to ever you know put put pen to paper um so i grew up in a, a circle of amazing people that were just inspiring um and so music for me has been my life i've been doing it professionally for 15 years and um it's literally what i 
strive to do in every free moment that I have. I'm, I'm blessed that it is my full time uh, career to be able to play music. Um, but as far as the, the relevance to the situation, it definitely has not helped at all. I've, I've lost out on some opportunities because of this and, uh, uh, you know, recording wise and, and things like that, that I could be doing in this time the past week that I haven't been able to do now focusing on this situation. So if I, if I, may, if I may interject, how exactly have you lost opportunities when you were the victim of something that happened? That's a good question. And I'm, I'm, I'd love to know the answer. So, I mean, as a as a reporter, I suppose I'll just dig a little. Did you have uh, some gigs booked that then were canceled in lieu of this? Um, yes, and also ESPN opted to not air any of the breakaway segments or footage that they got. Wow. Okay. So. Um... You were promised a slot, I suppose, with ESPN, and then did they reach out to you to say they weren't going to do it? Uh, nobody's been. Re I was never in contact with ESPN directly. That was the um, owners of the Native Art Market. But when the, the incident incident happened, uh, the owners reached out to ESPN. Um, which, by the way, when media reached out to ESPN, they they would not give a comment, um, and so they kind of just ghosted everybody. Interesting. Did you sign anything? No, there was no in agreement. In I mean, I believe there was waivers signed as far as, you know, right. like, is it, but uh, there was no contract that said, hey, like, you're going to be on ESPN. Uh, but it was very much clear as day that that's what was going to happen, that they were filming those those segments for that situation. And maybe I could be wrong, but I watched and I didn't see anything. So I mean, yeah, I was just going to ask, I mean, did, were you promised a certain slot? So you knew it was coming up? Uh, no, we were just told that it would be used during the Super Bowl on okay. ESPN's coverage of the event. Okay. Um, or sorry, have... during Super Bowl Sunday, I shouldn't say during the Super Bowl, but right on Super Bowl Sunday. On Super Bowl Sunday. And okay. So you signed a waiver. Um, have you tried to get in touch with ESPN? Uh, the owner of the Native Art Market has, and again, like I said, we've just kind of been ghosted. Interesting. If you were to have a message for ESPN, what would it be? It'd be that um, victims are not the ones who decide to be, or, or who should be punished uh, when people and perpetrators decide to act in this light. Uh, your reporters and your videographers knew that what happened was disgusting. They saw the whole thing from start to finish. They saw who the instigators were or the instigator. Mm -hmm. um, they knew that we were on the right and still we are the ones as often we are in the BIPOC community when this happens, who get the short end of the stick on the attack and get the short end of the stick on the repercussions from the attack. Well, Cody, I am terribly sorry that this happened. Um, we will certainly be following it, and we will continue to give updates to our audience. Uh, musically, where can people find your stuff, man? On Instagram, at the band Blackbird, and our website is thebandblackbird.com. All righty. Cody Blackbird, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Take care.